Welcome. The following video or audio are the study of the Bible, chapter by chapter, verse by verse of the King James 1611 Bible. Our family welcomes you to our household Bible ministry time. You may watch and listen with us. Our goal has been from Genesis to the book of Revelation. Each chapter by chapter we try. And topical preaching and teaching aids you can find by searching different topics. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. Come and appreciate the word of God for our spiritual growth, our development in the word of God by these lessons. Please feel, feel, please feel welcome to upload and share our Bible study with family and friends. Like us, subscribe, write a comment, let us know you heard the message. The video or audio are not copyrighted and should be used and not abused. Thank you. Galatians chapter 4. Now I say that the hair is long as long as he is a child differ from a differs nothing from a servant though he be though yeah he be lord of all. So He's even though he's young, he's still learning. There's no status, but is under tutors and of the governors until the time appointed of the father. So there's a set time for this child when he can get his inheritance, his adulthood, get everything that's given to him. Until then, he's just like a servant. Now this is an illustration. Even so, we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. So there was a time that we were servants of sin. We were servants of the world. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law. Now the question is, why didn't Jesus Christ be born Genesis 12, Genesis 3, Genesis 4? Why was he born what we call late in life, you know, the 4,000 years of the Old Testament? Why is that? Because when Jesus Christ was born, it is called the fullness of time. That is the set time that God would have his son to be born. God has already laid out a timeline. There's a timeline when Jesus would have been born. There's a time that, that uh, Israel would have been under bondage in Egypt when they would be freed, when they would enter the land. There's a timeline that the rapture would happen, the, the seven-year tribulation. God has a time frame. And we don't know what, what the time frame is. We can't change that time frame. It just happens. The way God has prescribed it to happen. And the set time here is Jesus Christ was made of a woman. So he's 100% man human form 100 percent god that's one of the means that you have to believe on jesus christ as your savior he was born of mary to redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoptions of sons so under the law is before salvation he came to redeem those that are under law by fulfilling the law 100% as he done or did. And because he are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into our hearts. Into. Now, nowhere in the Old Testament where the Holy Spirit came into. He came upon, but never into. Crying, Abba, Father. Wherefore thou art no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. So, I'm past that servant. I am a son of God through Christ. And what, as a, as a son of God through the heir, what do I get? I get everything that Jesus Christ get. New Jerusalem, all the glories thereof of glory. Heaven. <clears throat> I get the Holy Spirit that dwells in me. How be it then 
when ye knew not God, ye did service unto them which by nature are no gods. So here are Gentiles, verse 8, the Jews, verse 4, that are under the law. We Gentiles, we were under, and we got the thing, dumb idols. Habakkuk 2.18 and 1 Corinthians 12 too. It's called by Paul and Habakkuk. These stupid idols. That's what the Gentiles were. They didn't have a law. They had gods. Stone, wood. But now, after that ye have known God, or rather are known of God. Well, look at that. Now, let's look at the Galatians here, the church. There's a problem in the church. But let's look at also Christians. I know God, okay? But it's also recorded that God knows me. And that's a very important statement because there's many people, they know God, but God doesn't know them. And Jesus said, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I never knew you. The only way God will know you is if you are his son, and that sonship comes by Jesus Christ, born of a woman. That's a very important statement with scripture with scripture that if you're not known of God, you're not saved. But I know God, and more important, he knows me. How turn ye again? To the weak and beggarly elements. Whereunto ye desire again to be bondage. Now here's a sin. How turn ye again. That's repentance. But to the weak and beggarly elements. Whereunto ye desire again to be under bondage. They have done a reversal of repentance. They've gone from Jesus Christ back to the law. They've jumped back. We did a reverse. And now they're looking at themselves back under the law. That's the sin in the Galatian church. They, re they left grace for the law. To be saved, they left the law for grace. Ye observe days and months and times and years, the full moons, the holy days, the Sabbath. There's a church around the corner. They call them, you know, seven day Adventists. They honored the Sabbath day. That's not prescribed in the New Testament. That Sabbath day was given to the Jews as a sign. It was never given to the church. It was never revealed until Moses went up into Mount, er uh, er uh, Mount Sinai. At that moment, the Sabbath was never anything of Abraham, Isaac, Adam, any of those. Now, it's recorded in Genesis 1 that the Sabbath... It, you know, the, the uh, God created us in six days, and the seventh day he rested, and we see. Uh, but Genesis was written when Moses was in the mount in Exodus 20. We read it as a family today. Moses said, can I see your glory? And God's like, no, you can only see my back parts. And then he wrote the Ten Commandments again. There was no Sabbath revealing to anybody but to the Jews under the law. The Sabbath is one of the Ten Commandments. So there's a church that puts you back under the law as the Galatian church. And Paul is rebuking that entire thing. Now let's look at the rest of this chapter as the rebuke of putting yourself under the law. I am afraid of you. For I have bestowed upon you labor in vain. Brethren, I beseech you, I beg you, be as I am, for I am as ye are. Ye have not injured me at all. Listen, put yourself back on the grace. Get back serving God. You guys are, are off on a vain trip. You're not doing right. Ye know how... Through infirmities of the flesh, I preach the gospel unto you at the first. So the beginning of this church was the gospel was not the law. The gospel is not the law and the law is not the gospel. 
So they began with grace. And now their present condition, they're under law. And my temptation, which was in my flesh, ye despise not, nor rejected, but received me as an angel of God, even as Christ Jesus. Well, they put him a little bit of a, on a pedestal there, but that's how much respect they had for Paul. He came to a dying, godless people who God did not know and brought them the gospel. They got saved. Now they're known of God. Now they are the sons of God. And Paul, he's just so great for bringing the gospel. Where is then the blessedness ye spank of? Where's the happiness? Where's the joy? For I bear you record that if it had been possible... You would have plucked out your own eyes and have given them to me. Now, some people, this is where they'll say this is where Paul's eyesight was bad. I don't know. It's it's a standard blessing that, you know, if I would need an eye, you guys would have plucked it out. You would have done anything possible to help me, Paul. And with this statement, let's make... Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? You guys would have done anything you can to help me, and now I am your enemy. That's a long, vast statement, verse 15 to verse 16. Whether Paul had a bad eyesight condition or not, the statement really reads in these two verses You love me so much. And now you are counting me as your enemy because I'm telling you the truth. You are so now into this law, escaping grace, that when I'm trying to preach to you and teach to you and bring you back to repentance of the right repentance, you hate me. They zealously affect you. But not well. There's somebody in there that's being very zealous. Yea, they would exclude you that ye might affect them. But it is good to be zealously affected. I mean, it's good. If you got a zeal for God, it's the right zeal. Go for it. Always in good thing. And not only when I am present with you. I mean, not, it's not eye service. Serve the Lord and do right, no matter who's with you or who's not with you. Do right. But you're not. You got the wrong zeal. You got the zeal in something that is uh, we have been excluded from. Totally. That law. It is so important that Paul is right. We have from the Holy Spirit one book, one epistle to one church. And we have churches that have this doctrine today. They'll put you under the law. My little children of whom I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you. Listen, I birthed you guys. It's a lot of work to start a church. It's a lot of labor. It's a lot of tears. It's a lot of time. And then not only birthing these children, growing these children until they are made in the image of Christ, which is death. We're not perfect until we die or the rapture. Paul has said, I've been with you from birth. I've been with you through your entire growth birth, as young babes, as little children, as young men. As aged, I've been there. I desire to be present with you now. I want to be there. And to change my voice. What kind of voice? For I stand in doubt of you. So, anybody you know, and I'm not going to name a religion. Anybody you know, who whoever's in charge of their religion. Puts them under events or, or works or whatever it is. They have to do something for salvation. And they're not even assured of that salvation. The Apostle Paul says, I stand in doubt of you. There is no security 
with even a Christian who has slid away away from the gospel of Jesus Christ. I stand in doubt of you. Tell me, ye that desire to be under the law, there it is. There is what they are. You want to be under the law? I stand in doubt of you. Do ye not hear the law? Do you not know what that law says? And there are people again today. All right, we got the Sabbath day. And then when they go home, they fix themselves a tuna fish sandwich. Do you realize that the law says you're to kill them? Do you know that the law, that the law the guy went out and picked up sticks on the Sabbath? God said kill them. A man covered in something that was not, was not his. God said take that whole family and his animals and take them out in the valley and stone them all. God said, if you do certain things, there, there's, there's mention in the law, cut off. I know we're talking about Israel and the law, but here's somebody, they haven't read the law, cut off. Cut off means you are no longer in the right of God. You will go to hell and burn. There's nothing you can do. When God told that Jew, you're cut off, that's your salvation. That'd be like telling someone today, you're under condemnation. You're under the wrath of God, and you're not going to get out. Have you read the law? You can't have the seventh day Sabbath and cook or drive or do anything. When, when they got the manna, the manna for the seventh day was supposed to be cooked or fixed the day before. So all they had to do on the Sabbath day was take it out of the jar or take it off the cookie sheet or take it off the plate and sit and eat. That was it. And there's so many people that the, the Sabbath day to them is very important, and it's not. Under the church age, it's mentioned the first day of the week. So, here we go. For it is written, okay, I'm going to quote your scripture, that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bondmaid, Ishmael, the other by a free woman, Isaac. But he who was of the bondwoman was born after the flesh. That was not the promise of God. That was cheating God. Well, honey, God said we're going to have a child. We're going to have a son. Yeah. Well, he hasn't done it yet. So here's my maid. Take her. It was a relationship outside the marriage. It was a relationship that God did not say to happen. They did it their own way. The relationship between Abraham and Hagar for Ishmael was not God's way. That's not what God intended when he said, I'm going to give you a son. So that's born after the flesh. That was wickedness. That's sin. Hagar was sin. That wasn't Abraham's wife, even though the wife said, here, take her. So, but he of the free woman, Sarah, was by promise. Which things are an allegory. An allegory is a figurative speech. One thing is represented and another is intended. So Ishmael and Isaac are the allegory here of the law and grace. So, for these are the two covenants. The one from Mount Sinai. Now what was Mount Sinai? Ten commandments. Thou shalt not, thou shalt not. Thou shalt not. Remember that? The fire, the mountain, cracking. People couldn't even touch the mountain. Which is which gendereth to bondage, which is Agar, that would be Hagar in the New Testament writing. Bondage, the law. It put a it put a it put a chain about you. It put you in handcuffs. It kept you tied. There was no freedom. You couldn't look out and say, okay, well, I want to bring this animal or this thing instead of what God told me. No, you couldn't. You had to bring what God told you to bring. For this Agar is Mount Sinai in Arabia. And answer is to Jerusalem, which, is, which now is, as Paul is writing, right now, as he's writing this letter, 
the Jerusalem, which is now the Jews that are in Jerusalem who are not saved, are under Hagar of Sinai. They're under the law. They're under bondage. The ones that are not saved, they're under bondage. That's not so with you. You're saved. You're free. And it seems like the source of this is coming from Jerusalem. And it's throughout the book of Acts. It was Jews that wanted to put these Gentiles under the law. Somebody crept in the Galatian church and said, Here, God be circumcised. That, had nothing, that has nothing to do with salvation. You want, if you really want to be the children of Abraham, you have to be circumcised. Genesis, I forget what chapter it was. And we see, we've been seeing the, the faith of Abraham the other night. We see Abraham's children. Both those children were circumcised. Ishmael circumcises his children. But that's not salvation. So Jerusalem, which now is and is in bondage with her children, Israel now is in bondage. Those who are lost, they're in bondage to the law and to the Roman Empire. They don't have no authority in, in Israel. Rome's in charge right now. But Jerusalem, which is above. Now, it's interesting. Jerusalem, which is above. Where would where do you read about Jerusalem being from above in your Bible? You read about that in Revelation 21 where John says, I've seen the new Jerusalem come down out of heaven as a bride adorned for, for her groom. Where did Paul and John get this revelation of this heavenly Jerusalem? Now here we go again. Another place where John and Paul matched scripture with scripture they got it from the lord jesus christ this ain't jerusalem here over you know where you go pay money for an airplane and you had the roman catholics and the arabians take you around and show you this is where jesus was not killed this is where jesus was not buried this is the jerusalem which is above it is free this is where uh, Got my tongue a little tied up there. This is the Jerusalem where Christians go to, New Jerusalem. In New Jerusalem, there's no law. There's absolute, complete liberty. We would never even have to think about our thoughts. Every point when we get to New Jerusalem, everything is sinless, everything's correct, and everything's right. No pain, no sorrow, nothing. We don't have to bring an animal. We don't have to bring nothing. You know that the Jews in the tribulation period and in the millennium has to bring animals. The, the law is in effect still. You know there's a temple in the tribulation and there's a temple in uh, the millennium. Not for us. Which is the mother of us all. That's our home, Jerusalem. And we're free. For it is written. Again. Rejoice thou barren that beareth not. Break forth and cry. Thou that travailest, travailest not. You haven't had a child. You never had a child. For the desolation has many more children than she which has an husband. And for Israel one day they're going to break out and rejoice. And because barren. Many of, their, many of the Jews are going to be killed more than World War II under Adolf Hitler. Going to be killed by the Antichrist is almost going to be the nation is going to be almost, almost, almost entirely wiped out, and it's going to have children again, and they'll be under bondage and under faith and grace, but not now. We're under grace. Now we, brethren, so twenty-seven is Jews. We, brethren, saved as Isaac. Remember we had read the other night, we are the seed of Abraham? Because of the faith of Abraham, because of the faith we have in Jesus, we are in the family. We are as Isaac, the children of the promise. What's the promise? I'll give you eternal life. I'll give you crowns. I'm making a mansion for you. What did, what did Abraham promise Ishmael? 
Absolutely nothing. What did God promise Israel? I'll make you a nation and the whole world's going to be against you and you're going to be against the whole world. But the promise goes to Isaac. Was are the children of promise. But as then, he that was born after the flesh, I, uh, uh, Ishmael, persecuted, Genesis 21, 9, persecuted him that was born after the spirit, Isaac, even so it is now in Paul's writing, A.D. 58, they say, Ishmael, the Arabians, are still persecuting the Jews as they are today. And God said it's going to happen. Remember Sarah came to Abraham and said, that boy is mocking my son. You get rid of him. And Abraham was upset. And, and but nevertheless, what say it to scripture? Cast out the bondwoman. And that's uh, Genesis 21, 10. Sarah said that. And God said that. What comes after the flesh. That which is of sin, that which you've done, which God has nothing to do with, cast it out. Well, when you come to the law and you do your sin offering for the law, that did not pay for your sin. When the Jew died under the law, he went to Abraham's bosom. That sacrifice was not finished, signed, and sealed, and delivered to the Lamb of God, which came and take away the sin of the world. Cast out the bondwoman and her son, for the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. So, when we go to heaven, glory, New Jerusalem, there is going to be no bondwoman, no son after the flesh. There will be no sinners. We will be put in division between those that are saved and those that are unsaved. It will never be mixed again. So then, brethren, we are not the children of the bondwoman, but of the free. So the law puts you under bondage. Get out from under the law. You guys got yourself under the law. You're under bond. Get free. I mean, you're saved. You're going to heaven, but you're making your life most miserable. Holiday. You're trying to keep all these different holidays and all. That's not for the Christian. The Christian is, is the Lord's Supper as a memorial. That's to remind you what Christ has done for you and what Christ is going to do for you and his coming. There's nothing else. Just go in all the world and preach the gospel. Those that do get saved, train them up. Live right. Don't kill anybody. Uh, abstain from blood and, and, and foods strangled. Avoid fornication. And there's none of the other stuff added there. We, we read that through with James in the council. When he sent Paul out, you know, these are the rules of the Gentile. Don't circumcise him. And, I mean, if you want to do it because it's clean and healthy, yeah, but not for salvation. Not because you have a Christian. There, there is no have to. But there's also the free will of witnessing and, and earning crowns. Works after your save is because you want to do it for the love of God. Not because you have to. So the church is putting themselves back under the law. And that's what Paul is refuting. And he's trying to help them out. And they're like, hey, we don't want to hear from you. You... You've changed, Paul. And we'll read more.